Aloha everyone, this is May 11th, 12th, and 13th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode, we're going to be covering the formations of fissures 16, 17, and 18 further down rift than the rest of the eruption has been so far. We start off at Pu'o, the 35-year-old crater that drained away the magma within it in late April, now completely void of all lava, and the conduit is now unstable. Rock falls are common, especially when earthquakes happen. They produce these large pink plumes that can be seen from many areas. Further down the rift from Pu'u'o, the lower east rift zone, the eruption in Leilani Estates has effectively paused on May 11th. There's no new lava, there's no new fissures. We do have the existing fissures producing a high amount of SO2 and other emissions. As we fly over the subdivision, we're now looking at the lava flow from Fissure 8, which started on Luana Street, crossed over onto Makame Street, destroying dozens of houses in the process, but has also formed the most significant feature so far in the 2018 eruption. As we approach Fissure 8, we can start to notice the spatter rampart that is formed on the south side of the eruptive vent with the lava flow that was produced moving to the north. As we fly over this early formation of Fissure 8 from the air, it's important to remember what's happening underground. We still have these earthquakes that are propagating themselves further and further down the rift. They're now in the Halikamaina area, and it's really looking suspicious down there, but there's still no active event or anything along those lines. May 11th, for the most part, is the quietest day of the eruption so far. And then early morning on the 12th, Fissure 16 emerges. Fissure 16 is much further down the rift than all of the previous fissures. It takes place in the Halikamaina area, right where those earthquakes that we've been watching for the previous few days were suggesting something might transpire. Now, this area is less densely populated than Leilani Estates, but for those that do live in the area, this is you know a traumatizing event. It's a fissure, a volcano appearing in your yard. But where Fisher 16 precisely emerges is a small uninhabited area that's overgrown. So no homes are lost with the introduction of the fissure. That's gonna produce a small but significant lava flow throughout the day. Meanwhile, back up at the Kilauea summit at Holly Mau Mau, USGS has started to put out advisories that an explosive eruption or explosive activity at the summit is becoming possible and this is going to start to facilitate the closure of the national park. We jump from the air back to the ground at Fisher 16 a little bit later in the day on May 12th. You can see the lava that's being produced from the fissure is starting to overrun the vegetated area. This fissure is producing a small but significant cinder cone relatively quickly. Lava flows are mostly confined to the area around the vent, but it's starting to look a little less viscous, a little more fluid. And even though the vent is only spattering tens of feet in the air, less than 100 feet, this is still a very active situation. A little bit later that same day, we see here the steaming area emerge just slightly down rift from Fisher 16. Now the steam is indicative of a upcoming Fisher eruption, but it's not Fisher 17 that emerges here, it's Fisher 18. And there's gonna be some confusion around Fisher 17 and 18 that we're gonna go into shortly. Then we notice that cracks are emerging on Highway 132 as well. Highway 132 is the last major access route that has been untouched up until this point from the 2018 eruption. Poiki Road was covered earlier in the eruption from a fissure. Highway 130 has cracks and deformation, some uplift that has hampered the usage of the road. And now Highway 130 is starting to show the signs too. And for those that were familiar how these cracks might progress from Leilani in the early part of the eruption, these are concerning signs. May 12th, Fisher 17 emerges. This is just down rift of Fisher 16. 
The main thing that stands out about the early onset of Fisher 17 is the sound. This thing is loud, really loud. It's explosions that are produced by interactions with groundwater are enough to rattle windows miles away. And the audio that you hear in the clips and these videos cannot do justice to the sensation of being there for these explosions. While Fisher 16 was mostly confined and in line with the other Fisher eruptions, if you were to draw a line down all the active fissures, Fisher 16 would be relatively close. Fisher 17 is offset to the north and is also a thousand feet long. So we need to talk about some of the issues around the labelings of Fisher 17 and 18 and the designations as fissures. Kind of highlight some of the limitations of the labeling process that we had in 2018, but it's important for review. The issue begins on May 12th at the area just down rift from Fisher 16 that's audibly venting gas. This is being designated by some as Fisher 17 that are there and witnessing it. USGS then comes out and says Fisher 17 hasn't happened yet. So when Fisher 17 emerged, it didn't happen all simultaneously across that entire 1,000 foot span. It happened in segments and when people on the ground saw these segments emerge, they labeled it Fisher 17 and 18. And these reports got fairly widely circulated until USGS put out a clarification saying, no guys, this is all Fisher 17. The entire span is Fisher 17. But if that wasn't confusing enough, USGS put out a photo themselves of that steaming area just down rift of Fisher 16 and labeled it Fisher 17. That would be Fisher 18 when it finally emerged. So there is really just some strange jostling for labels at this point in the eruption. It's just adding to the confusion and the anxiety of people living with the ongoing activity. Now this I just want to share because it was an incredible piece of footage of a close call that a resident of Lanipuna had with Fisher 17 out in the cane fields of Halikamaina. You can see how close he is to the eruption. He says, I'm not going to get any closer. But then the eruption decides that it's going to get a little bit closer to him. I'd like to get closer, but I don't want to. <laughs> That stuff looks deadly. That'll do it for May 11th, 12th, and 13th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode we covered Fisher 16, 17, and 18 as well as some of the confusion around the labeling process. The next episode, we're gonna focus on some of the unique characteristics of Fisher 17.